I am back, ladies and gentlemen, and this week, Derby County face up against Stoke City at the Bet365 Stadium. We've had a couple of draws across the course of the last few weeks. The last two, I haven't been able to give my full match day verdict, so we're going to go through that in this video. We're going to talk about Ryan Niambi and David Ozo and how crucial their injuries are going to be for Derby County going forward. We're also going to talk about Stoke City and look ahead to that game this weekend. Obviously, there's been a lot of action going on throughout the course of the championship over the course of the last few weeks and we're going to look across all of that as well and it's one of those for me where Derby County have uh, been picking up points which is the important thing and uh, it's just become a case of instead of uh, losses being losses we've turned those losses into draws we've started scoring goals at home and away and we look to be in a fairly decent position heading into this one now first off we're going to talk about Oxford versus Derby County that was live at the Kassam Stadium now. Obviously, you look here, uh, it was a 1-1 draw between Derby County and Oxford. Uh, I think it was... I, ha I didn't get a chance to watch it on the night due to, obviously, uh, not being very well. But uh, I've watched it back since and it really felt like a game of two halves. It felt as if Derby County in the first half just weren't quite sure what they were doing. Um, and in the second half, I'm not saying it was massively better, but it certainly looked as if there was more of an idea behind uh, the patterns of play. Obviously, Dane Scarlett picked up, I think, at that point was uh, his second goal in two games. Uh, Mendes Lang scored his first goal of the season as well, which was massively, massively important for Derby County. A little basic look at the numbers, 52% to 48%. You wouldn't really decipher that watching the game. It's, it's It was a very, very even game in my opinion. 0.46 XG to 1.15. Doesn't surprise me. I think we had more opportunities in the game. Just don't think either team really had any proper clear-cut chances. 11 shots to 17. Zero big chances, I think, which sort of backs up. Now, obviously, heading into this one, Wilson had to step up in place of uh, the injured Ryan Niambi and uh, obviously David Ozo was still out as well, Corey Blackett-Taylor kept his shirt, but it was one of those where I wasn't quite sure what we was actually doing, obviously, uh, Harness got dropped for Ben Osborne, Ibu Adams played in a number 10 role, and I'll be completely honest, we've seen it before earlier in the season, I can't remember which team it was against, where Ibu Adams was the furthest of the forward midfielders, and as much as it's good from a defensive standpoint, in an attacking standpoint, I just think it takes more away from our play than what it gives. And I think we saw that on this night. Ibo Adams often won the ball in really good areas and then just didn't have the technical ability to be able to do what was necessary or uh, didn't have that sort of creative mindset where he could create an opportunity for uh, his teammates and uh, it's obviously uh, we know Dejan Brown recently has stepped up and he's done a really good job and I think realistically I thought Sibley would start for these but he didn't it's one of those um, but I think overall it was a very even game I think Derby County deserved uh, I think Derby probably deserved three points come the end of the 90 minutes but I think when you give up 45 minutes like we did and you let them score, I think it's very difficult to then turn around and go, oh, well, we should have taken three points. Now, obviously, on to the next one, you've got uh, Hull City. Now, I did do a little bit of a match day vlog, obviously, no talking from me in there. Um, and it was probably a bad decision to go to the game because I was not very well after it. Um, but... Obviously, Hull City scored. You will have seen both the goals in the vlog. Uh, Javier Simmons scoring after 57 minutes. A really, really nice finish into that bottom corner. And uh, none other than Marcus Harness sitting in that uh, holding midfield role, being unable to get the block off. Now, obviously, that is just a little bit of a joke. Uh, for those who follow me on Twitter, you'll know uh, the drama that happened after uh, David Ozo's injury. But uh, as I've said time and time again this season about Dejan Brown is... If you give him an opportunity and you put the ball in front of him, he will score goals. And he's done that. And it was a wonderful goal by De by Dejan Brown. It was uh, an abs It was one of those headers where any other day it's probably saved or tipped over the bar. And yes, I acknowledge that. But he got himself in the right position. The header was perfect to go over the keeper and into the into the goal. And that's exactly what Derby County needed at that point. And 
ultimately after that, I think Derby County were the favourites to probably go on and win the game. But then Dejon Brown picking up a little injury later on in the game and it got a little bit sloppy for Derby County, in my opinion. Didn't really have a focal point on the pitch. Um, but you look at the numbers, I do think it was a very even game. I think Hull City, they've spent a lot of money this summer and they've got a lot of good players and it's one of those for me, well, I say they've got a lot of good players. They've got a lot of players who should be good based on their value and obviously you look at the numbers behind the game I think obviously we had more shooting opportunities but I don't necessarily think it was much of a whitewash either way obviously you look at the two lineups Harness came back in Kenzo looked miles off it for this one and I was very disappointed with Kenzo in this game I felt that it looked as if he was playing on an injury or if he wasn't playing on an injury he was uh, he wasn't fit enough to play so it's one of those for me where I think he may miss out on this one at the weekend, but we'll have to wait and see what happens. Um, obviously, Abu Kamara, uh, I don't think he was really an issue. I didn't ever feel threatened, if that makes sense. Like The whole City goal came from nowhere, and I don't necessarily think that we actually had any real issues to deal with, if that makes sense. Obviously, off the bench, Dejan Brown came on, picked up his goal. Ben Osborne got an assist off the bench. Phillips, Blackett Taylor, Thompson. And I actually thought Blackett Taylor looked okay off the bench. Um, but it's going to be interesting to see what happens over the course of the next few weeks. Obviously, especially with Dejan Brown. You look at the league table now. We're currently sitting 12th in the division. 15 points from 12 games. We've picked up three in the last three. I said we could get nine out of this run. And I think we've got three games left before the run is over. Yeah, we've got Stoke then it's Coventry in midweek, then it's Plymouth before the next international break. Now, there is a big talking point, and that is Ryan Niambi picked up a really bad knee injury in the Millwall game. I think I spoke about it post-Millwall. Um, I can't remember if I'm completely honest, but it, it looked bad from the start, and I don't think Niambi is one of those players that goes down and has that sort of reaction and doesn't even try and get back up. So... I thought from the off it was sort of guaranteed that it was going to be a long-term thing. And I think uh, obviously what he's done is probably best case scenario for the situation. I don't necessarily think it's best case scenario for Derby. Obviously losing Ryan Niambi, probably our best right back at the club. And I know some people don't like him uh, because of obviously his lack of attacking output. But I think when you talk about what he can do from a defensive standpoint, it makes us such a better team. And it's unfortunate we're going to lose him. I think he's probably been one of Paul Warren's best signings since joining the club. So that's something which... Uh, we're obviously having to work with. Obviously, Kane Wilson stepped up in his absence, but losing him for four to six months, which is what Paul Warren said on the radio, it's disappointing. He'll probably be back, what, March, April for the running, which uh, by that point, it, we'll probably know where we are in the division. We'll probably be trying things. It's going to be really interesting to see how long he actually ends up being out for. Obviously, here it says early return December 2024, but... Judging on Paul Warren's comments last week in the press conference and uh, that I've heard since, it looks as if he's going to be out for up to six months. So it's disappointing for Niambi, but hopefully he comes back and stronger. Obviously recently signed a new contract as well, so that's disappointing. Now, obviously on to David Ozo. We're supposed to be back for the Oxford... Well, we're supposed to be back for the Millwall game, but uh, they saved him. Then was supposed to play the Oxford game, but picked up a knock on his final day. Well, was supposed to be back involved for the Oxford game, but then picked up a knock on his final day, and he's out for another uh, four-ish weeks. So it's going to be interesting to see when he comes back. It probably won't. It, well, it won't be until after this next international break. A massive disappointment for us at Derby County. A really, really big player, and it is just a shame that we're missing out on him. Obviously, big injuries to big players at key points this season. We've obviously worked well without uh, Ozo at the moment, but our midfield is looking pretty, pretty small at the moment. You obviously, uh, I don't know why Liam Thompson isn't on this list, but you're obviously missing Liam Thompson, who has only just come back. Ben Osborne's hit and miss, whether he's fit. Ozo's out. So it's one of those where it is a little bit disappointing at the moment. So obviously... We look ahead to Stoke now, which is at the Bet365 Stadium, live on Sky. and It's it's going to be a tough game. 
in my opinion. I think Stoke City are a really good side. Obviously, I don't necessarily think their league position shows how good they are. I think they had a tough start. I think they've changed manager, if I remember rightly. And heading into round 13 of this season, I think uh, Derby County are in a really good place. And I think when you look at Stoke, obviously back-to-back defeats in recent weeks. But Derby County have been through that as well. So it... <coughs> Some injuries to note as well for both sides. But it's one of those for me. I think it's going to be a very, very even game. Would not be shocked at a fourth draw in a row for Derby County. Uh, obviously, Stoke City's last five. nil-nil with Swansea. 1-1 with Norwich. 2-2 with Bristol City. 2-0 uh, loss to Sheffield United. 3-2 in the Cup to Southampton. You look at Derby. One win, one loss, three draws. Hull City, Oxford and Millwall, the draws. QPR at home, the, the win. And then Sunderland away, the defeat. It's going to be interesting. Uh, looking at this game, obviously Stoke City sitting 19th in the division, but they are only three points behind Derby. And what we have to acknowledge is at this point of the season, three points is not a lot. Uh, obviously, a win puts them, well, if it's 2-0, uh, it'll be on level terms with us. 3-0, they go above us. So it's always a possibility that we could end up below them after this game. Now, we are in a really good position. A win for Derby puts us into the playoff picture, which is obviously crazy to think of when you think we've only just come up now I'd be happy finishing 21st I said that at the start of the season I think if you go back to my predictions and my previews I think I said 21st in the division is where I'd be happy for Derby County um, even if it's a point if it's a goal difference if it's on goal scored I'll be happy with a with a point above the relegation zone a goal above the relegation zone that's enough for me um a lot of people think now oh we should be doing better we should be aiming for that mid table and i think if at the end of the season we end with what 15 points from 12 what's that per game probably uh, I don't know, let's just work it out. 15 divided by 12, that's 1.25 points per game. That puts you on 57 at the end of the season. And I think 50, 50 is the magic number. We're 45 points away from that. A win this weekend will obviously help with that. So uh, if we look at the home form, obviously Derby County sitting in the playoffs in that one. Stoke City down in 19th. So Derby County do have an, an opportunity, but Derby County are sitting down near the bottom for their away form. Just two draws. Obviously, they've come in the most recent games. So, if Derby County can pick up another draw, it's an excellent point, in my opinion. I think we should be going through all three points, though. Uh, you can obviously let me know your thoughts down in the comments. Now, if we do look at the Stoke City squad, um, they have some really good players. Obviously, thank Frank Fielding, ex-Derby, Victor Hansen, a player who Derby County potentially wanted this summer. You obviously look at Ashley Phillips, a really good player. Uh, Lyndon Gooch, a player who some of you may know. You look at the likes of Ben Pearson, obviously I know he's going to be missing. Boss on Lowell, a player Derby County were linked with this summer. Moran, a player who uh, some Derby County fans who know about youth football uh, said that we should have picked up. Tej Gell is a player who's growing and growing into the first team. Lewis Kumas scored a really nice goal a few weeks ago. Uh, Niall Ennis and Sam Gallagher as well. Some big players uh, for this Stoke City side. It's going to be interesting to see how this does go. It's going to be a very, very interesting weekend fixture now if you have not done so already make sure you hit that subscribe button and turn on that notification bell to stay tuned for all of my latest derby county and efl content we're going to be dropping a video tomorrow all about uh, two derby county players who i am urging to sign new terms at the club it's a massive uh, situation at the moment for Derby County with contracts. There's a fair few out of contract this summer. Obviously, the step up to the championship, we'll see some of those move on. But there's a couple of players who I think really need to get hunkered down to new terms. You can let me know your thoughts down in the comments. Let me know your score predictions as well. And I'll catch you in my next video. Make sure to go and find me on TikTok, pictured here, and Twitter, pictured here. These are the places where I'll keep you all up to date with all my upcoming videos and my thoughts and feelings around the Formula One and football weekend.